How for the radio program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. The mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. And I'll tell you why. It's because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plans, even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things. For I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the whistler for the tops in entertainment. And for the tops in gasoline quality, it's signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly independent signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Creo of Rogues. For ten years she had been Mark Hartwick's private secretary. Standing now on the wings of the small town auditorium... Miriam Wells could close her eyes and still see every expression, every gesture made by the speaker on the stage. She could put her hands over her ears, still know every word and how he said it in that booming, driving voice that somehow managed to hypnotize people at the polls. By your great power of vote, to send me to your state assembly, I say here and now that I shall not let you down. Because I know and believe that the smallest city helps to make the greatest state. I intend to cut through and tear aside the confusion and the red tape. Pinpoint the problems right down to the needs of places like this. Your Smiling, own Miriam Wells and turned I... and hurried to one of the backstage dressing rooms where Joe Crane, Hardwick's campaign manager, sat pecking away at a typewriter. Well, don't tell me you're writing a new speech. I'm uh, just brushing up the old one for the next time. Oh. Hey, how do you spell prestidigitation? Oh, now, really, Joe. P-R-E-S-T-I-D-I-G. Ah, uh, never mind, never mind. How's the big boy doing? He has a meeting out of his hand. What else? Uh, you know something, baby? He's going to make it. Come election time, he's going to make it. Give me a cigarette, will you, Joe? Sure, here you are. Thanks. Yes, sir. And this is only the beginning. In a few more years, our Mr. Hartwick uh, may... Uh, right, Joe. Yeah, yeah. You were saying? I'll let you in on something, sweetheart. Mark got a phone call this morning from Judge Cantrell. The old gent's been quite impressed with our tour. Seems he's been interested in Mark for some time, too. Judge Cantrell? Hmm. You know how Mark stacks up with the voters. They love him. There isn't a cleaner record in the state. Mm-hmm. And if the judge backs him, who knows? Our Mark may wind up in the governor's mansion in another five years. Right. That's why this election's important. If Mark makes it, he's on his way. Nothing will stop him. Mm, how nice. How very nice. What are you grinning about? Oh, nothing. I was just thinking how well things have turned out for Mark. And, well, for us too, Joe. Hmm? I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time, Joe. A very long time. Mark's career means a lot to me. Joe doesn't really understand, does he, Miriam? But he will before long. Yes, you do want Mark to succeed, don't you? Because you know that when he does, you'll be able to turn his power to your advantage. 
That's why you've waited patiently. Waited for the right moment to start your plan into action. Now that moment is close at hand. And when at last the tour is over and you've returned to the home office, every day brings the promise that it's going to be worthwhile. Well, Joe, Miriam, we've got them. Yes, sir, I'd say we're in. <laughs> I could have told you that before you started yeah, the tour, It was Mark. costly, but effective, very effective. You've done a grand job for me, kids. I want you to know I appreciate it, and I won't forget it. Okay, when you get to be governor, can I have a deputy sheriff's badge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see, Joe, we'll see. Oh, uh, by the way, has the garage sent my car around? Uh-huh. And uh, here's your copy of the speech for the group luncheon. I've uh, hopped it up a little. Good, good. Sprinkle good. a few jokes here and there. Always goes over big with the boys, you know. <laughs> well, I'd better be on my way. Oh, uh, Miriam, we're donating $1,000 to the Boys League. It's the judge's idea. I'll get the check right out. Hey, will someone come around to pick it up? Maybe we can work out a little ceremony of some kind. I'll get pictures. No, 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 no. I'll make it the simple treatment. Uh, mail it to him, Miriam. All right, Mark. Well, see you later. And Joe. Yeah? If those gags of yours lay an egg, you'll hear from me. <laughs> what a guy. Unloads a thousand bucks just like that. Joe. Huh? Mark must have an awful lot of money. Take that wall safe over there. You know there's close to a hundred thousand in that? <laughs> You've been peeking over his shoulder whenever he opens the safe? I don't have to. He uh, got a little overexcited one day a long time ago when I first came here to work. He was sort of careless. I, uh, I got the combination. Oh. Uh-huh. Want to look at all that money, Joe? What good would it do? Money fascinates me, Joe. I like to look at it. Come on. Hey, look, uh, suppose he comes back he in. He won't. Stop worrying. <laughs> Oh, those beautiful little packages. Five, ten, twenty grand. Oh, no, no, no. Put it away, put it away. I can't stand it. And stock, bonds. Some look very negotiable. Very. Close the safe, sweetheart. You're drooling. Wait a minute. Here. Take a look at this. Hmm. Newspaper clipping. Read it. Smithtown, Texas, July 15th, 1924. Men all prospect are murdered by partners. Go on, Joe. Keep reading. Harry Moore, a local prospector, was found late yesterday at a campsite where he and his partners had been working a claim. Before he died, Moore told Sheriff Gannon that his partners, James Murdoch and Martin Henderson, quarreled with him over distribution of profits, attacked him with a large wrench, then left him to die. The pair fled with the entire proceeds from the sale of the mineral rights. Sheriff Gannon issued a statewide alarm describing both men as over six feet in height and weighing close... Miriam, what is this? Joe, listen to me. To keep this clipping all these years, wouldn't Mark have a personal interest? What are you driving at? Martin Henderson, Mark Hardwick. Get the picture? What is it they say about people usually using the same initials when they pick an alias? Uh, No, no, no. Wait a minute. It could be, Joe. Could be. I've had a lot of time to think it over. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Now put this stuff back in the safe, huh? You want me to lock it up? Forget about this? What else? <laughs> All right, Joe. I'll lock the safe. But you know I won't forget about it. And I don't think you want me to. Do you, Joe? <laughs> With the prologue of Trio of Rogues, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Right now, however, I have good news for some of you contract bridge fans. Possibly you may have stopped by your signal dealer to pick up one of the bridge lessons, which Signal is giving free, only to find that your signal dealer was already out of certain lessons. Well, frankly, friends, the demand for these Signal Bridge lessons exceeded our expectations. However, I'm glad to be able to tell you tonight that more of these lessons have been printed and are at signal stations now. So keep in touch with your signal dealer and you'll be assured of completing your set of signal six lessons in contract bridge. What's more, this second printing offers another opportunity for any of you who may have missed this offer previously to still get a complete set of lessons. 
Written by that famous bridge authority, Robert Lee Johnson, and recommended by none other than Ely Culbertson, these signal lessons offer not only a challenging review for experienced players, but also an easy way for those of you who have never played bridge before to learn the game. So see your signal dealer soon. Make sure you have your complete set of signal six lessons in contract bridge. And now back to the whistler. You don't forget your discovery in the safe at the office. It's much too close to what you've been waiting for, isn't it? That old newspaper clipping that Mark has kept so carefully to himself. It holds the story of a murder, doesn't it, Miriam? And possibly the key to how you can take Mark's money away from him. It's only a day or two later that you take the first step, a bombshell dropped gently with the hope that it will explode. Well, how did it work, are we? Just going over some figures on the campaign fund, Mark. How'd your talk with the judge come out? Oh, fine, fine. Oh, Mark. Yeah, what is it, Miriam? There was someone here this morning to see you. <laughs> well, is that so unusual? Well, I thought so. He was a oh, tramp, sort of, and he claimed to be an old friend. Said he knew you someplace in East Texas. Uh, Smithtown. Smithtown? Yes. Ever been there, Mark? Well, what did that man look like, Miriam? Oh, about your height, thinner. He had that saggy look, like a man who's been much heavier at one time. Uh, did he... Did he say he was coming back? No, but he did say you'd hear from him. That's why I mentioned it. He, uh... Oh, he somehow gave me the impression he wasn't going to be easy to brush off. Oh, I remember something else. He said he'd been a partner of a man named, uh... Moore. Moore, that was it. He said that would mean something to you. Does it? If, uh... If you hear from him again, Miriam, I want to see him. Don't let him get away if I'm out. You got that? Oh, then you do remember him. Well, maybe, I don't know. But any man who claims... Well, he may be an old friend. He need help or something. Oh, sure, maybe that's it. Say, it would make good human interest material for Joe. No. You... no nothing on this, you understand? Joe. Yeah? You hear this? It's one to steer clear of. Keep it away from the press. I'll handle it. Don't worry. See that I don't have to. What are you trying to pull? There wasn't any tramp in here looking for him. <laughs> no, there wasn't. But he fell, Joe. Hook, line, and sink. Okay, okay, so he fell. You've got him thinking his old pal Murdoch showing up. What happens now? It's our chance for better things. You see, Murdoch could turn out to be a very greedy man. Uh -uh. Blackmail. Is that the word? Oh, you can say it prettier, Joe. You're good with words. Uh, coming in with me? The champagne's fine. You're crazy. Mm, all those piles of bills, Joe. Thousand dollar ones. Lots of them. Think of it, Joe. Think of it. We could work out a nice little deal for ourselves for years and years. Read it back to me, Joe. I'm worried about this. I can sometimes trace printing. Oh, he won't show it to the police? Read it. Okay. Imagine how surprised I was when passing through town to see your face looking out at me. So now you're Mark Hartwick. Respectable and rich. Well, Mark, I'm sure for old times' sake you'd let an old partner have a few bucks so he can move on and not disturb your new life. A hundred thousand would set me up fine, so I'll get in touch with you real soon. I call myself John Singer now. You'll know who it is when I sign that name. Sincerely, your old friend, John Singer. Sounds good, Joe. Nice. Like fine music. Oh, you have a rare gift. <laughs> sure. Now what? We mail it. Then we just sit back and wait. The scream you'll hear will be Mark Hartwick. You want me to get it, Joe? No, I'll take it. Suppose you finish mixing the drinks, huh? Okay. Hello. Joe, this is Mark. Oh, yeah. What's up, Mark? Uh, 
You remember Miriam mentioning some fellow was in to see me last week? Uh, claimed he knew me years back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, got a letter from him. He needs my help, badly. But he didn't mention where I get in touch with him. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, what? that's funny. Why doesn't he, um, come around to the office? Well, I, I don't know. He may be sick or something. And I've got to find him, Joe. He's a, he's an old, uh, friend. Do you understand? Yeah, sure, sure. But uh, what do you want... I want you to attend to it, Joe. Hire a private detective if you have to. Just get me John Singer. Singer? That's his name? Yeah, that's the name he's going by. Now, I don't care how much it costs, Joe. Find him for me. And find him in a hurry. Okay. I'll get right to work on it. Fine. There'll be a nice bonus in it for you, Joe. Uh, Thanks. Um, Of course, uh, Miriam will have to help me. I, I won't forget her, either. I'm sure you won't, Mark. Good night, Joe. (laughs) Well, what do you have to say? He wants me to hire a private eye to find John Singer. Here's your drink, Joe. Thanks. No expenses spared. The boss is very anxious to help uh, his old pal. What do you think of my idea now? Time will tell, sweetheart. Time will tell. A week ought to do it, Joe. I think our pigeon will be ready for us by then. Hiya, sweetheart. What's up? Mark's been pacing up and down that office like a caged dinosaur for the past three hours. Where have you been? I told you I had to check the details of the parade for tomorrow night. The parade? Oh, yes. Well, all right. You'd better go in and see him. Now, look, sweetheart, can't I tell him I found Singer? No. But he's driving me nuts. He's hounding me day and night. Where's Singer? Where's Singer? I said no. The time is not right, but just a sec. Yes, Mark. Has Joe come in yet? Just this minute, Mark. I'll send him in, and uh, you come in too, Miriam. I want to talk to the both of you. Oh, all right, Mark. What do you suppose that means? Well, he probably wants to chew on our fingernails. His own must be all gone by now. Come on. Uh, come in. Come in. Come in. Look, Mark, uh, about Singer. I still All right, Joe. All right. Uh, uh, sit down. Sit down, both of you. Sure, sure, sure Mark. Uh, Joe... Miriam, you've been with me a long time, and I... Wait a minute. This isn't the axe. No, 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 nothing like that. On the contrary, I need you now more than ever before. It's about Singer. I know I can trust you, and I'm going to let you in on something. What's the trouble, Mark? Here, Here, read this letter. I got it several days ago from Singer. Let me see, Miriam. Blackmail, that's what it is, blackmail. It's going to give me a few more days to make up my mind. A hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. Mark, why don't you take this to the police? No. No, I uh, can't take this to the police. That's the worst of it. There was a little fight down in Texas years ago. A man was killed. It was self-defense, mind you. Self-defense only. I can't prove it. Singer will ruin me, Joe. You can see now how important it is that we find him. But, Mark, there's only one way to deal with this sort of thing, and that's to go to the police. Unless... Unless you've decided to pay. Yeah, the police in this town hate my guts. Then you've decided to pay off? Joe, there's only one way to stop a blackmailer. It isn't by crawling to the police or paying him off. What? You've got to kill him. Wipe him out like you'd squash a chinch buck. <laughs> That's something you hadn't expected. Is it, Miriam? Mark doesn't want to pay. He wants to kill. And that doesn't fit in with your plan at all. You have to retreat now. Revise your strategy. You wouldn't want to let Joe know you're a little rattled. So you're happy of the chance to think alone. By mid-afternoon, you know what your next move must be. Impatiently, you wait for Joe and Mark to return from the league luncheon. Shortly after four, the office door opens. Oh, Joe, I've been waiting... Howdy. Oh, Hello. What can I do for you? Well, I just dropped in to see if Mark Hartwick was around. Oh, he's not. I'm sorry. You expect him back, do you? Really don't know. Can I help you? Well, no. Let's see him. Personal. Oh. Well, if you leave your name, I'll tell him you called. Any chance of him coming back tonight? I doubt it. He's scheduled to meet the parade at 7th Street. At... Parade, huh? 
Well, I'll drop around later, just in case. He may not be able to see you. If you'll give me your... He'll uh, see me, ma'am. He'll see me. What makes you so sure? Mr. Hardwood's the biggest busy man. Just leave your name. My name don't matter. Just want to talk to him. Well, I'm his private secretary. Anything you have to say to him, you can say to me. Uh, well, maybe. Maybe not. I'll be around later. Bye, ma'am. Well, that makes everything dandy, doesn't it? Joe. So you had company, so I came in the side door. Well, what happens to our plans now? Well, I... I'm not worried. Even after talking to Murdoch? Murdoch? Yeah, the man we called Singer in our note. Look, you know and I know that Texas boy didn't show up for no reason at all. It has to be Murdoch. There were three of them. Murdoch, Henderson, Moore. Moore's dead. Martin Henderson's our own Mark Hartwick. That leaves Murdoch. You know that as well as I do. And if he talks to Mark... We've got to get to Mark first. Before Murdoch gets around to seeing Mark... We'll be out on the highway headed for parts unknown. Look, as long as we have to skip, why bother going over to see Mark? The dough is in the office safe. You know the combination. It isn't here. Mark took the money home with him last night. We'll have to go out there and get it. But, baby... The plan stands. We're going out to Mark's house. All that's changed is that now we won't be lying when we tell him we found the man called Singer. <laughs> Joe, my boy, you found him. You found Singer. Yeah, that's right. A couple hours ago on a lead from the detective agent. Where is he? Where is that dirty... Now, rotten... wait a minute, Mark. You just can't go out and shoot him. You know a better way? Well, be smart. After all, a man in your position, you can't take any chances, get involved in a thing like that. What Joe means, uh, we've thought of another angle. Yeah, what's that? Joe has already contacted Singer, arranged to meet him tonight at a quiet little spot outside of town... For the payoff. Payoff? I told you I don't it intend It won't to... be the kind of a payoff that Singer expects. You see, Joe's not going to keep the appointment. He's hired someone to take his place. Someone who'll get rid of Singer for you. You... You hired a gunman, Joe? Well, I, uh, I told him I'd let him know. Well, is that smart? Don't worry. He's not a town boy. He'll blow as soon as the job's over. You won't be involved in any way. Leave it to Joe. He'll handle the payoff. Everything, Mark. How, uh, how much? Uh, 50000 50000 uh, Nothing small time about this boy. That's only half of what Singer wants. And besides, he'd be coming back for more. This way, Mark, fifty grand. you are in the clear. You won't ever have to worry about Murdoch bothering you again. No. No, I won't, will I? All right. I'll get the money, Joe. Just a second. Oh, I didn't think it would be this easy. No, neither did I. I'd sure like to be around to see Mark's face when Murdoch shows up. Well, you can stay if you want, but Baby is traveling. I hope he makes it in small bills. I don't like to handle it. What's the matter? Mark, what's the idea to the gun? Don't you know? Is this a gag? Put it away, Mark. Tell me more about Singer, or as you just called him, Murdoch. You uh, talked to him, did you? Well, sure. Sure, I talked to Murdoch. I, I made arrangements. You're to... lying. You found that news clipping in my safe, didn't you? I made up this whole blasted story so you could shake me down. You and Miriam wrote that letter, didn't you? There was never anyone putting the bite on me. Listen, Mark, you got it all wrong. I was talking to Murdoch a couple of hours That's ago. That's right, Mark. No, no, it isn't Miriam. You see, I'm Murdoch. You? Yeah. You picked me for Martin Henderson because of the initials, didn't you? Well, you guessed wrong, friend. Mark, you gotta believe me. A guy came around to the office asking for you. If you're Murdoch, then he must be Henderson. And you still need... No, a... no, Joe. I'll bite once, but not twice. I can prove it, Mark. He left a note. I have a... Uh, don't do that, Miriam. Just toss that purse to me, hmm? Uh, all right, Mark. Here. <coughs> Get it, <him>, Joe. <coughs> I've got the gun, Joe. Okay. Okay, come on. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. What for? Darling, there's an awful lot of money in this house, and Baby is not leaving without it. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a word about something free, which can mean a lot of extra pleasure for you if you're planning a trip this Labor Day weekend. Stop by your signal dealers for one of his new road maps. 
you'll find Signal's new maps a great help in suggesting interesting places to go and the best way to get there. Being just recently printed, they have all the latest road changes and conditions. They're large size for rapid reading, but have the improved accordion fold for easier handling. And you like their many extra features not included in ordinary maps, such as a radio log showing where on your dial you'll find your favorite network programs as you travel. Also, a guide to interesting places to visit, plus a Western States mileage chart. So, for more travel fun this weekend, remember these two tips. Get one of Signal's new maps from your Signal dealer. And, of course, power your car with Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. And so, the plan that was set into motion with the discovery of a newspaper clipping linking your boss, Mark Hartwick, with a murder some 24 years ago, has finally paid off, hasn't it, Miriam? A plan that only a short while ago seemed doomed to failure as Mark faced you with a gun in his hand after he'd found out you and Joe Crane had been behind the blackmail scheme. Yes, things had looked dark indeed at that moment. And then Joe had changed it all with his fist. Half an hour after you leave the unconscious Mark Hartwick on the library floor of his home... You're driving across town with Joe and $75,000 from Hartwick safe tucked away in your coat pocket. Well, don't look so glum, Joe. It's all over. Yeah, sure, sure. You're a rich man now. I was pretty near a dead one. Oh. Joe, can't you take a shortcut to the highway? There's an awful lot of traffic around here. Well, I'll turn off at the next corner. Joe. What? Up ahead, it's... Joe, it's a cop. Waving us into the curb. Turn around, quick. Oh, I can't do that. I'll have to pull over. What is it? What's happening? Wait, listen a minute. A calliope. Yeah, the parade for Mark. Oh, no. What do we do now? I don't know. I... Hey, look. I'm going to call a cop over and tell him I'm Mark's campaign manager. Maybe he'll let us through. Officer! Officer! Yeah? Over here. Where? It's Joe. I was hoping I'd catch up with you two. Right nice of you to call the officer over. I planned on his help. Henderson. Henderson? <laughs> nope, we got him long time ago. The name's Blake, Brazos County, Texas. Deputy Sheriff. Mind if I sit in with you? Hey, now, wait a minute. Just picked up your boss, Mark Hartwick, on a 24-year-old murder charge. Turned him over to the local officers. <laughs> he sure is riled at you two. Says you stole some money of his that he got in Texas. Yes, sir. So mad he didn't care much about his own arrest as long as I got you two. <laughs> well, this is a right nice parade here. Yes, sir. Right nice. Your idea, Joe? Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Doris Singleton, Barney Phillips, and Willard Waterman. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by George and Gertrude Fass, and music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at this same time next Wednesday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>